What is up, my friends? We are back. Another interview with our friend, Mr. David Lynch. David, how are you, sir? Yeah, good. Just got back from a few days in Prague and we were just telling you there off air. I was, another, I was a little bit worried that they were going to sign someone while I was away and I was going to miss all the hype. And uh, yeah, fortunately, I didn't, or unfortunately, I didn't have anything to worry about, did I? Chance will be a fine thing at this point, <laughs> Dave. A chance will be a fine thing. And look, I hope you enjoyed Prague anyway. Yeah, fantastic, beautiful city. I, I don't think I've come across a hidden gem here or anything, but if anyone hasn't been, absolutely recommend it. Stunning place. I've heard lots of good things about the old, I guess, East Wall countries, the old uh, countries from, I guess, East Germany outwards. They're all supposed to be beautiful, really good old stone castles and buildings. And I've heard lots of people who've gone to Prague on uh, stag dudes who've got co good things to say about it. But I think you were over there with the missus, so probably a little bit more yeah, respectable. Slight, slightly more cultured experience on my part. But to be to be fair, we saw all the places you could go on a stag. And honestly, honestly, it caters for everyone. So like I say, absolutely recommend it if you can get out there. So unlike this transfer window then, which is not exactly a smorgasbord of uh, options for us, I want to start off today, David, if I can, with just just ask you what you think the latest is around Trent Alexander-Arnold and his potential contract renewal. Yeah, unfortunately, sort of no solid updates on this one. Um, you know, I just wonder, you know, in terms of delays around it and, and, and how talks will progress. You know, we're only a week away from the end of the transfer window. You know, just that uh, Liverpool looking at, look, we've got a lot to do in terms of outgoings that, you know, there is still a desire to make some incomings happen. Um, you know, is that something that you can just park it for another week or, you know, don't make, don't need to make concrete progress on it? You know, you don't need the contract to be signed in the transfer window. I mean, I know everyone wants positive updates on it and I absolutely think it's, a, it's such a huge priority for Liverpool to get this done. But also another week doesn't do a huge amount of harm, does it? So I do wonder whether we'll, you know, if, if there are to be positive updates, we don't quite know. I have to be honest about that. We don't kind of know which way that's going to go at the moment. But if there are to be positive updates, then I, I suspect it will be the other side of the transfer deadline just because, like I say, there, there are things that, that, that are to be done and, and have to be done by the, the sporting director and that whole structure uh, that take up a lot of time and a lot of energy in this period. So, with regards to Trent, you're, you're absolutely spot on. For me, as long as that's done before the next transfer window opens and there's the possibility of him signing a pre-contract, I think that has to be done. But... If I'm Virgil, David, I'm probably not feeling too loved at the minute. Club captain inside the last year of his contract. And I think most of us understand that Michael Edwards is probably a little bit reticent to give longer deals to ageing players. But Virgil has just come off a Premier League Team of the Year performance. Statistically, he looked like he was back to his best. What are your thoughts on this one? Do you think he gets an extension in the end? I think he's got a great case for one, just because I think centre half is a position where you can you can play on a little bit longer, you know, and he has looked so good, hasn't he? I mean, I think contract length will be the sticking point over that in terms of what if if he is absolutely adamant that he wants a, a particularly lengthy contract, then I, I think Liverpool will have a very very difficult decision to make. But I think if you know he has made clear to us every time I speak to him behind the scenes, kind of he really really does want to stay at Liverpool. So the desire is there on on his part, and I guess probably a, a, an ability to compromise as well in terms of length of contract and, and what that actually looks like. Um, you know he's not the top top earner either. Obviously he's, he's amongst the, the the top earners, but he's not Mo Salah level. So I think that makes it more workable for them in terms of negotiations and as well. So, again, I, I just think in terms of how contracts are, are happening, we know a couple of weeks back he said that nothing had been kind of put on the table yet. And I think very similar to Trent, you know, maybe if we are to see updates on that one, it's going to be the other side of the transfer window. But it, again, you know, I, I think the ingredients are there. I think the player wants it. I think Liverpool will be able to see this clear value in, in extending it. Uh, even if they think that some decline will eventually come for him, I think you know two, three year contract they could probably you know protect themselves with that and, and think that they get enough out of it. Um, and so, I, so I think there'll be a, a desire on both part, uh, both sides really to to get this done. But maybe it'll be the other side of the transfer window. But I, I agree about your points in terms of you know I think that the real deadline there is to get those sort of things sorted and lined up by January because obviously you make it very very difficult for yourself if you don't do that. So we've mentioned two of the three. Oh, obviously, the great man is the last one. We've seen a goal and an assist in the opening Premier League weekend. A little bit of chatter in the Athletic about a possible move to London or he's open to a move to London if Liverpool don't agree an extension. What do you think in the end happens with Mo? 
Yeah, I've always kind of cast a little bit of doubt on this one in terms of thinking it's a hard one for Liverpool to do because his wages are, are so up there. It's you know it's the biggest contract Liverpool have ever given out in their entire history. So uh, you know he really is highly paid by their usual standards, and Liverpool only gave him that contract because they knew they were going to get this certain level of performance out of him. That becomes a bigger question going forward when he's at the age he is. He had that little injury that knocked him offside towards the back end of last season. So I think I think this is easily the trickiest of all three and it's, it's kind of difficult to judge how that one goes. Like I say, similar with the others, no real concrete updates in terms of movement on that and don't expect it till after the, the, the transfer window. But as I say, I think that's the, the most difficult out of any of them really. And I think, you know, kind of everything's on the table really. There's going to have to be some compromise from the player's side. There's just no doubt about that one because his wage is so high. You know, whether that, compromises on is on the wage or the length of the contract something's got to kind of give there I think I, I just don't think Liverpool can afford to well they can afford to in terms of financial terms but it will there'll be huge risks attached to giving him another three years at £350,000 a week and I think everyone would accept that you know if you're running the club sensibly that will be a, a dangerous contract to tie yourselves into so that's why I think this one's a really tricky one as is the case with the others, we, we have to just hang in and, and wait and see. But I, I, I do just have that feeling of slight pessimism around that one. But then you see how he performed on the opening day of the season. And you're like, well, give him whatever he wants. He's unbelievable. But yeah, it is it is a really tricky one, that one. The, the most difficult of the three, I would say. Yeah, it's the one that I would envision myself as probably the one that doesn't get done. But as you said, we'll have to wait and see. All options as of right now are still on the table. So we've gone from the sensible stuff into the ridiculous now. And let's have a little conversation about Mr. Jared Branthway of, well, I guess the same parish as us, just the other side of the parish. What are we thinking here? Is there any hope that we can play possum and come in very late here with a bid that maybe Everton have no choice but to accept or do you think this is just fantasy football stuff I've got no doubt that Liverpool like him as a player I think you know you know left-sided centre-halves he's English he's homegrown so that's really helpful in terms of the numbers around that um, so no no doubt that the scouts very much admire him but I just think too difficult a deal to get done I think Goodison Park might get burned down before they even move out of there if they were to sanction a sale of that type I think I just think you know, there'd be, there'd be open revolt from fans. And I think if, in terms of the absolute need to 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 get a fee for Jared Branthwaite, I don't think there's huge PSR pressure that they have to do it in this window. And I think if they did have to do it, they would just simply rather sell the player elsewhere. And I also think as well, another reason to kind of cast a bit of scepticism around this one is I think Branthwaite's next move is surely got to be to go and be a starter somewhere. And, and you could argue, is he really going to be that at Liverpool? Does he displace uh, Ibrahim Kanate, obviously doesn't displace Virgil van Dijk as a starting point. Does he displace Kanate, who I think is a class act and people kind of forgot that towards the back end of last season. He's, you know, I think he's up for a big a, a big season for him. And, and Jarrell Quanter as well, who, oh yes, okay, yes, subbed at half-time against Dipswich, but still one of the biggest talents in, in European football in terms of that young centre-half. So um, I, I just think it's hard to see Branthwaite coming in and starting enough games to be happy. So I think player side and Liverpool and Everton side, very, very difficult to see this one. I think it was a case of kind of someone backs that and, and then the odds start to shorten, don't they? And it, it starts, starts to uh, come in from there, really, and uh, people get a little excited on social media. So for me, not, not anything really in that one. Yeah, I always try to say to our viewers that all that means is that money is going on it. That's all that means. The odds tumble as more money goes on as the bookies panic thinking people know something they don't and they lower the odds. So I absolutely agree with you on that one. But squad depth at centre-back may be a problem for us this season. I think most of us probably felt going into the campaign we could do with adding a centre-back as it is. Now, obviously, Sepp Vandenberg has moved or is about to move to Brentford. Uh, very good fee. Can't argue about that whatsoever. £20 million plus £5 million an add-on. Seems like a long way from Mainz feeling they could get him for 5 or £6 million at the start of the window. That's so they've done well there. I've got to give them the credit. The club have done well there. But if Joe does or doesn't move, I still would like to see a centre-back come in. Any ideas or any indications of the possibility of that or who it could be? So we definitely know that that's an area they've been looking at. In terms of names, I, I mean, it's no surprise really that, that Liverpool is, is very kind of locked down at the moment in terms of getting anything out of there. I think that's a, a little bit of a consequence of what happened with Zuba Mendy. Again, that wasn't the story they wanted out there, but it got out there and, and kind of, you know, 
it, whether it was their fault or not, ended up looking a little bit foolish. And, and so obviously things are very, very tight in terms of information and identity of targets. I know a few names have been thrown out there. I, I would expect it, as I said, I, I kept you know being consistent about this throughout the window. I think it would be someone who would be willing to come in as a fourth choice because I think it will ultimately be if, if, if they do make a movement there and they, they move firmly in the market, you're kind of looking for that Joe Gomez replacement, aren't you? Because there's such an open possibility of him leaving uh, before the window closes. So I think it's going to be someone who comes in and at least initially, so maybe that makes it a younger centre-half, someone who will come in and not demand to be a starter because Liverpool have got such strength and depth there at, at centre-half at the moment. So I, I skew thinking it's going to be kind of someone who's younger, but with real, real ability to develop into a starter and, 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 and claim a spot eventually. So that that's kind of where I'm leaning in terms of what it's going to be. And I think th- there's a real possibility there for, for Liverpool to add in that position. I think it's one position where we can see clearly that the, 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 there's going to be a need or there's a real threat of a need to, to, to strengthen there. We know they've been monitoring that market for a while. Just one name who kind of keeps getting thrown out, by the way, is Inacio. Um, that, that's one I've constantly, you know, from the start of the summer to now, had really sort of aggressively shot down as not someone who's a target at the moment. So if you keep seeing that name, I wouldn't maybe get excited about that one. But in terms of who it actually is, I, uh, you know, hold my hands up, not not anything we kind of know at the moment, to be honest. On an ASIO, I agree. Left of a back three doesn't make sense. When we looked at Amaram, perhaps that would have made sense if Amaram was changing the system. But in ASIO, I agree for various reasons. One, we could have had him last summer for a lower release clause. He signed a new deal at Sporting Lisbon. Joe Gomez, though, I don't want to talk about him again for a moment if I can. Obviously, understandable if he wasn't in the match day squad last week for various reasons. I mean, it's been described that there were adult conversations, sensible conversations had. And I think you've always said to me that the club are very mindful and very respectful of the service that Joe has given to the club. What's your reading of the situation right now? Yeah, I think similar situation that we were early in the summer. I mean, it, it kind of was an easing off, wasn't there? And in, 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 in almost a suggestion a couple of weeks back that it was possible to stay. But my, my understanding has always been that, you know, there's real possibilities for him to leave, to be honest, is that, like like you say, that the club has it's reached a point where the player is open to the idea of a move because he wants to play more frequently and Liverpool are open to facilitating that if the conditions are right for them, which is obviously the fee has got to be right. And we know the you know valuation maybe somewhere between 35 to 45 million somewhere in that which i think is a good deal for someone because he's versatile he's he's, he's got that homegrown status as well and he's you know it fits into any squad uh, because he's such a nice guy as well so uh, got an awful lot going for him so it, it's still a situation where awful lot of clubs sniffing around him you know i think newcastle's really a possibility if they don't get that gay deal over the line uh, maybe aston villa looking at him as well um, so if if one of those clubs moved firmly, I don't think Liverpool would stand in his way if the money was right. So that is a real open possibility over the next seven days, and and one that you know if these things move quickly once they start moving. So and clubs will know that time is kind of running out. So um, I, I think a, a few clubs poised to move there for Joe Gomez, and I I would lean towards maybe him moving on uh, before the end of the window, just because there is such great interest. The club would let him go, and he is willing to go if it's the the right move where he'll play frequently. You'd have to imagine if we let him go, there's somebody lined up. Yeah. If, whether it's a utility defender who can play across the line. I mean, we've touched on Knight Nuri before, can possibly play in a couple of positions. Certainly, Joe Gil- Gomez gives those gear through the vibes that maybe Ernest Lott was used to a fan. Or now, I'm not suggesting we, we'd made a move there, but I can't see a world where we'd sell Joe Gomez and not have a replacement lined up because it's. Yeah. Uh, it's it's really leaving us susceptible then to an injury. I think it would be absolutely crazy and, and, and any criticism that would come their way would, would be fully deserved in a situation where they would let Joe Gomez go. You know, I know the argument would be maybe that at the moment he's fourth choice centre-half, maybe third choice right-back, third choice left-back or second choice left-back at best. But I think, look, you, you will get injuries throughout the season and having someone who is that versatile, he, he's, you know, big part of saving Liverpool's season last year. Um, and I think, you know, to, to go into a season with only three centre-halves, even if you consider him the fourth choice, um, would be extremely risky because we know in a not you know not too distant se- season when Liverpool did that and it really, really bit them. So, you know, the hope is that they will do better in terms of injuries going forward and that's something that Slot and his team will bring. But I don't think you can gamble on that and not going into the season with four senior centre-halves, I think would be madness. So I would fully expect 
that Liverpool would move into the centre half market if, if Joe Gomez was to, to depart. I think there's less of an argument that they definitely need one with Van den Berg going because obviously he played zero minutes for Liverpool last season. But Joe Gomez, there, there would, in my opinion, be absolutely no excuse if they were to do that. That would leave the squad uh, definitely weaker than, than when they started the summer, I would say. So to go to the other end of the pitch now, I think it's Peter O'Rourke today put out a piece linking us with a sensational move for Cavaricelli of Napoli, whom Antonio Conte has said he's been given reassurances, won't be sold. He said Oshiman potentially, but not Cavaricelli. So linking into the constant links to us with an attacker in this window, the fact that Ben Doak is apparently available either for loan or to be moved on, What's your reading of the reasoning behind our, us being linked to so many attackers, particularly on the left side? Yeah, I'm kind of surprised it's been linked to so many on that left-hand side. I wonder if some of that was kind of maybe a preparation for, for a potential Luis Diaz departure. But but on that, I, I've kind of been told over the last week or so that huge expectation that he will stay now. We would be very, very surprised if he were to leave. It's kind of too late in the window. And I mean, you look at the situation that Barcelona are in with with their financial uh, situation, not even being able to register Danny Olmo. There's just no chance that they will able, be able to come in for Luis Diaz. So I think those links and the links to, to Manchester City were pretty much nonsense, really, when they came around. So absolutely expect that Luis Diaz stays. I think there's potential for, for an addition in an attacking role, again, just trying to get ahead of that most Salah departure if it's, if it's going to come next year, but also just to add that little bit of extra depth in that position and maybe prepare for, for Luis Diaz if it's not to leave this season, maybe it's next summer, um, just to add some depth there. So I do think there's potential there, but I, I don't think it will be uh, Krav- Kvaricelli. How, how do you say that one? So I've practised Kvaricelli for a while. I've just gotten Mamadou right, Fili down. There. Kvaradonna yeah, yeah. is together with JL free card. Yeah, I'm, I, I almost lent into going Kvaradonna there, yeah. Um, but I, I actually messaged someone at Liverpool about this earlier today when I saw that link and, and, and I got a three-letter response, which was just, nah. So uh, I, I don't think it's going to be him who, who comes in, if I'm being honest, which, to be honest, when you, when you look at the amount he would go for, what it's like negotiating with Napoli, negotiating with them at this point in the window for their best player to come in and he hasn't got a clear starting spot at Liverpool or you know you, you push out some players where you've got real strength and depth up top, uh, yeah, it, it's not really a shock to me that that's not going to be a move they, they get over the line. And I'm very, very thankful because I absolutely do need to pronounce, uh, practice pronouncing that one, don't I? Clearly on that evidence. I've used Google Translate a few times or Google Pronounce <laughs> to get me through a few of these. So anything new on Anthony Gordon, actually, while we're talking about overstock left wingers? Yeah, again, I, I wonder whether this one's kind of died a death for this window on the basis that Luis Diaz is expected to stay. I think if... If Liverpool were to add an attacker, would it be someone lent towards that right-hand side and, and someone who could really back up Mo Salah? I think that interest in Anthony Gordon is absolutely still there. So, you know, you can never rule anything out. Maybe Liverpool decide that, look, we could use him on the right-hand side. We can get something out of him there. And, and that's the way they approach it. Uh, and maybe a left-hand side spot opens up next summer. So, absolutely would rule nothing out because I know Liverpool like the players so much. And he clearly would love to make that move as well. But I just do wonder whether this now is going to be on the back burner until next summer and, and maybe that's something they look to do going forward. That will be interesting, actually, in terms of what that means for Anthony Gordon and this contract that Newcastle are putting in front of him. Does he push to, for a release clause? Does he just not sign it and say, I'm going to, I'm going to run myself down to, uh, to one year left next summer? That's a really interesting situation in terms of how he approaches that. Um, but it's it's kind of gone quiet on that at the moment. But like I say, I, I would say quiet around that one, but I wouldn't be as definitive in ruling that out as, say, a Luis Diaz departure because I think just because that like of the player is there and if Liverpool sense an opportunity and they talk, didn't they, about being opportunistic in the market. So if that opportunity comes up and they think it's too good to turn down and Newcastle are in that weakened position because of the contract, maybe they do go for it. I can't, I can't concrete, you know, in any concrete fashion rule that one out. But it's just gone a little bit quiet at the moment, from my understanding. So just a couple more questions, David, before I let you go. Costas, you and I have spoken off air and you've had this inkling that maybe Costas could be available for purchase. There's been some stories coming out of Greece suggesting a loan maybe back to Olympiacos. Do you think that makes any sense? 
Yeah, I'd be surprised if if Liverpool were willing to sanction a loan unless that was in it. You know, unless there was maybe a buy option. Well, not even an option. Obligation, I would imagine, because I think Liverpool would would want it. You know, you don't want to end up in a situation. It doesn't suit them in any way to just loan him out in a straight loan. So, uh, you know, I think I think there'd have to be some sort of buy obligation in that. But it, I still do have this inkling about Simicas. I mean, sources kind of close to the players' camp of being very tight-lipped in situations where maybe they previously wouldn't be and it's just making me think there's something in this. I, I just feel this has got some legs to it. Um, you know, There's only a week left of the window, so if any club's going to come in, they're going to have to move quickly and, and get this sorted. But it's just I've just got to sneak that there's something there and I think that you know that, that is very much one to, to still keep an eye on. And I think that would open up then Liverpool's possibilities in terms of adding a left-back, which again is something that... They've kind of looked at options that are maybe left-sided centre-half so you can play out there or straight left-back. So I think, you know, there are options there that, that Liverpool could move for. And we, we've spoke about Nori before, um, fantastic player, I think would suit them down to the ground. So maybe there's potential there for a Simicast departure and they get themselves in a, a perfect Robertson success. So that would be a, I think that would be a really smart move. And, and as I say, with Simicast, still get that sense that there's something there. Might not absolutely come to something, but it's definitely not anything that no nobody at Liverpool and nobody on the players' side is ruling that one out, which they would do in concrete fashion in past windows. So definitely, definitely keep an eye on that one. Could be developments out of nowhere over the next week. So the final question I have for you is, is a twofold question. Firstly, what are your thoughts on us selling Bobby Clark and not loaning him? And what do you think that happened? And to follow up, is there any news on Rio Nyamoha? who apparently we've gone through the five-step process where it's been investigated by the Premier League, but still no announcement. Yeah, so on Bobby Clark, I, I guess Liverpool had a decision to make, didn't he? How close was he going to be to first-team minutes in the next 12 months? And the answer is probably not very. When you look at what Liverpool have got in attacking midfield roles, he's got to push Dominic Sobers lie out, he's got to push Harvey Elliott out for that preferred right-hand side. Obviously, Alexis McAllister can play further forward. You've got... Cody Gakpo can even play in there. Obviously, Gravenberg, we using him in the six at the moment, but can play there. There's just such competition. And I think, you know, he's probably had some big physical steps he needs to make to push into to first-team football at Premier League level as well. And his valuation was never going to be as high as it was after last season when he had such an impact and looked so good. So, it's a, you know, it's one of those where, yes, Liverpool could have loaned him, but what more would they have learned about him, really? Uh, uh, you know, I, I, I think they have to make tough decisions where you say... What's the next level for him? Where, how much is he going to kick on in the next 12 months? And they thought that's not going to be enough kick on to come in and absolutely demand a place in this squad. So they've made a, a, you know, a tough decision, but a decision that's you know reaped £10 million for a youngster that he bought for a, a nominal fee from Newcastle. So you know sometimes you've got to make these smart business decisions. And I think you look back to the Rian Brewster situation and you know that, that was one where you know that at the time they were kind of pilloried for that one. And, and they were proven to be right. And I guess they're just going to back the judgment here and hope that in 12 months' time, you know, that Bobby Clark does well at Salzburg, but not well enough to sort of mark himself out as a guaranteed starter at Liverpool, which I think, you know, I lean on the side that they're probably going to be right about that one. But even though I hope he has a, a great career and I think he's going to be a very good player, I'm not sure it's going to be quite that top, top level where Liverpool massively regret it. And on, on Rio, who, by the way, I, I watched a Chelsea... So we're talking about pronunciations. I watched a Chelsea... Uh, TV commentary and apparently that one's Ungmar. So I actually did learn that one, uh, seeing as it's a player who, who is going to be coming into Liverpool. And uh, I believe with that one still going through the registration process, not quite done, but the expectation that that is that it's just kind of going through formalities. So not not anything to worry about. I think that one will absolutely get done. Uh, last I heard, like I say, it was just just going through those Premier League formalities, but but absolutely should be done. I don't think there'll be any announcement from Liverpool or anything like that. It'll be just quietly moved into the under-18s and you'll maybe see him there when, when they're shown on LFC TV. But, uh, but yeah, I, I, every expectation that that deal gets done would not not anything to worry about on that front. I wonder was it how impressed Arna Slot was as well with Trainee only in pre-season that perhaps uh, gave them the thought process that they could let Mr. Clark go. I mean, Trainee only has, he looks the business when he plays. He needs to fill out, obviously, and work on the physical side, but the talent looks unbelievable. Well, I think that's it. I mean, anybody's got any worries that this kind of fire sale of young players is is sort of a, a move towards a new era where the, the club doesn't trust its academy. You just have to look at Trey Ioni and, and that's an example of slot. If you are good enough and you play his type of football, 
then you absolutely will get your chance. And, and Trey Nione, I expect, is going to get minutes this season. You know, maybe not big minutes. You're not going to see loads of him in the Premier League or anything like that. But certainly in the domestic cups, he'll get his chance to shine. And, and he's a big part of first team training now as well, just established in that, which, you know, given the fact his physical frame isn't quite there, just shows you the quality he's got in terms of football uh, terms. So, yeah, um, that I think, you know, big, big hopes around him and, and real excitement. And Arne Slot really seems to like him. So I think we'll see a lot of him this season. So, David, I read your Substack today. Anything else that we've got coming up that you'd like to let the viewers and listeners know about? Obviously, I'm subscribed to your Substack. I, I love to get the press conference updates and stuff like that. What have you got coming up? Yeah, so more from the embargo section from Slot and then obviously going into the, the game. Obviously, I'll be at Anfield on, on Sunday in the press box as well. And uh, hopefully over the next few days, some some big news in terms of Liverpool incomings. We're obviously, we're just waiting at the moment. But these things, they move very quickly, don't they, once we get the nod. So, um, you know, hopefully over the next week or so, some some exciting stuff to come, some signings. So, uh, yeah, we, we keep our fingers crossed for that. Thank you, as always, David, for giving up some of your time to come and have a chat with us. We do appreciate it. And no doubt we'll catch up soon. Always a pleasure. Thanks, David.